Eric Solheim is former Minister of Climate and the Environment of Norway. He told CGTN's Juliet Mann why this visit is vital for both sides. I think this is a most important visit because it comes after connections have been somewhat broken down by COVID. It comes at exactly the same time as Secretary Blinken from the U.S. is visiting Beijing. And, of course, we have to remember that Li Chang, the new Chinese premier, he was the party secretary of Jiangsu, he was the party secretary of Shanghai. That's a, a lot of business that he doesn't really have, as far as I know, kind of the personal connections to Western or other international leaders. So this is a first start of a long-lasting relationship with him for Western leaders. You talk about the business relationship, but the slogan for, for Tuesday is acting sustainably together. It wasn't so long ago, though, that Germany was urging China to take greater responsibility on climate and be more ambitious when it comes to things like renewables. So where do you see them working more closely together? That is kind of diplomatic ping pong. I mean, at, at this point of time, China's far ahead of Germany or indeed Europe when it comes to the environment technology. Look at the Shanghai Auto Fair in, in April. I mean, I think it came as an enormous surprise to Volkswagen and BMW and all the German brands how far China's come uh, on electric vehicles. They're far, I mean, 60% of all electric cars in the world are, are now made in China. They're far ahead of Europe. But obviously, the, the most important is technologically exchange. It is for the companies to work together. This cannot be done by states. But this is for Siemens and the car makers of, 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 of Germany. And from Longi, the biggest solar company in the world in China, or BYD, which is now the biggest uh, company in the world when it comes to electric vehicles, is to form partnership between these to drive technology forward and thus improve environment standards both in Europe and in China. Now, Lee's trip comes as Germany is intensifying its efforts to de-risk from China. So how, how might that affect what comes out uh, of these consultations? Well, this started with the American slogan of decoupling between China and the West. And that is, of course, a recipe for disaster. And I think basically everyone knows that if you decouple, it will be economic downturn everywhere. And it will be also a road, unfortunately, towards conflict. And, in the worst case scenario of uh, war. De-risking is somewhat different because de-risking is not completely irrational. I mean, Chinese companies now basically fully control the value chains in critical areas like, say, electric batteries or solar panels. I mean, it's totally dominant by China. So it's not irrational for European companies to look into how it can make the value chain serve Europe better. But that's a policy which should have no anti-Chinese bias. I mean, Europe should do exactly the same versus the United States. I mean, European companies need more control over important value chains, and those de-risking can be done, but it should be done in a neutral fashion, not anti-Chinese, not anti-American, just to kind of protect European companies. And, of course, it should always be done within the confines of the World Trade Organization and with the aim that, yes, we de-risk, but the main avenue for the future is cooperation. Eric Solheim, pleasure talking to you as always. Thank you very much. Thank you.